G'day again guys and thank you for joining me. So today I'm going to be working on a brand new beginner's colour pencil tutorial. Now if you are very very new to colour pencils then I do recommend going back to the first and second in this series where I talk about how to actually get the colour pencil down onto the paper and how to blend those colours together. But today we're going to be exploring how to achieve a couple of different textures with our colour pencils. Now here's the reference picture I'm going to be working from and you can see here that I've got one bauble that's really quite shiny and reflective and the other bauble behind it is a little bit more satin matte in appearance and we're going to explore how to create those differences in textures in our piece today. Now you can see in front of you that I'm working with only six colours today I'm trying to keep this really simple. Um, now if you've done the first three tutorials in this series then you will already have the white the black and the grey in your collection so there's only three more pencils that you'll have to add just to try and keep this as simple as possible. Today I'm going to be working with my polychromos pencils because they happen to be my favourite but I have also listed an alternative selection of Prismacolor pencils to get a really similar effect. Um, it really doesn't matter guys just use what you have use what you like. I'm going to be blending out my pencils today using odorless mineral spirits. Um, I've got a brush here a nice little Taclon bristle brush. I also have um, a little scrap piece of paper that I'm going to be using to dry off some of the um, odorless mineral spirits and I've got a kneaded eraser. Now this is really handy with this particular piece. Um, a couple of these blue colours really tend to smudge quite easily and it's quite handy to have this kneaded eraser on hand so you can just uh, pick up any smudges that might get out of hand. As always I will have a full list of instructions on my website so you can check that out and my $5 patrons will be able to watch over my shoulder in real time as I create this piece uh, step by step. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so I've got my line drawing set up on my paper here. Now this is much darker than I would usually make my line drawings, but I do want you to be able to see this on the camera. So I've had to make a little bit of a compromise. Um, some of these lines might show through in the final piece, um, but if you're going to do this yourself at home, try to make these lines as light as possible. My line drawing here is a little bit wonky, but that's okay. I will be able to neaten up those circles as we move forward. Now, this piece is incredibly easy to draw up. It really is just a couple of markings on some circles. There isn't too far that you can go wrong. But if you're not feeling confident, I will have the line drawing over on my website over for you to be able to download and trace if you like, along with the reference picture that I'm working from. Okay, so I'm going to start on this bauble on the left. And my first step is going to be to take my white pencil and fill in the very lightest areas of colour. Now this is probably the trickiest part of the whole drawing because it's a little bit tricky to see where you've put down this white pencil but this will make it easier going forward because it's going to be much harder to make this area way too dark if I've got a bit of white pencil down there first for you. And I'm going to start filling in these areas. This highlight here I'm going to fill in pretty strongly inside this marked area. And once I've got a good layer of that on that paper, I'm just going to add a very light layer outside that circle. Not pressing hard, just adding a little bit, just extending the border of that highlight a little bit. And I'm going to do the same on this highlight over here, where I fill in the central section of this highlight fairly thickly. And then I'm just going to take a little bit around the outside to blur the edges. And then I'm going to do the same in this section here, but much, much lighter, only adding a light layer of pencil to the paper. With that white in place, we're ready to get some colour down. Okay, so now that we've got a map of our very lightest areas in place, I'm going to go in with my indigo pencil and start mapping in the very darkest areas of this bauble. The very darkest is going to be along this edge here. Now there's a bit of a dark section up on this top half. Just going to go in very, very lightly here. And when I get to this line, I'm going to cross over a little bit onto that whiter section. Now that white section on this bauble is actually the reflection of the table that this ball is sitting on. And we're going to blur the edge of that by going slightly into that white area. Okay, now I'm going to go in to this little area underneath the cap. I'm going to add the darkest areas that I can see here. 
For my next step I'm going to take my phthalo blue pencil and I'm going to put a layer over the entire bauble except for those very brightest highlights. Now I'm going to add a very very light layer of our middle phthalo blue right over the top of the very brightest highlights there. As you can see here, some of that blue has already started to escape from that circle. So I'm just going to take a moment to use my kneaded eraser just to neaten that up. Because I'm just about to blend this out with my odorless mineral spirits and I don't want to accidentally push any of this loose pigment into a place it's not meant to be. I'm going to load my brush with a little bit of the odorless mineral spirit and then I'm going to use my scrap piece of paper to dry off the excess before I start to blend these colours together. Now for a detailed description on how to do this step, please go back and check out my first beginner's tutorial where I show you how to blend out your colours in much more detail. I'm going to clean off my brush very well and get rid of any excess dark pigment there and then I'm just going to go in and blend out these lighter areas. The white we put down first is really going to help us from accidentally putting down too much dark colour over that highlight. And I think that's looking pretty good for a first layer. While this dries I'm going to move on to this second bauble. Okay, so just like this first bauble, I'm going to colour the highlights of this one first, but this time instead of shading everything out and making all of those edges blurry, I'm going to fill in these areas, but I'm going to be really quite precise about it and have some really sharp edges. So I'm going to take this white and I'm going to fill in this square pretty accurately right up to those lines that I've got down there. Now this little highlight does follow the curve of that ball, so it does have a, a little bit of a bend to it. Um, just for reference, these two highlights here actually come from my big square studio lights, if that kind of helps you visualise. Um, so I've got these two big square softbox lights, and then I've got the white of the desk down here. And that's exactly what's being reflected in these balls. Go over the second side. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on this bottom section. I'm going to go right up to this line and not over it. And I'm going to fill in this whole section. Not all the way up to this edge here, there's a little bit of um, a blend as it goes around the corner, but for the most part, I'm going to fill this all the way in. I'm not going to press hard because this will, if you do press hard here, you'll get a funny pattern, which I did a couple of times while I was practicing doing this, and it actually didn't look too bad, um, but it's definitely not what I want. I do have a highlight where the reflection from this ball is shining on this one and it's quite a sharp reflection just right on the edge there. I also have a little bit of a reflection up here where this cap is reflecting off the ball here. Um, so I've got a little bit of a white highlight here and a little bit of a white highlight here. And there's also a little bit of a white highlight coming down this way, which is also a reflection of this ball. And a little bit here, which is a reflection of that cap. And with that in place, I'm ready to move on to the darkest colours. So with those lightest areas in place I'm going to go back in with my indigo pencil and I'm really going to define the darkest areas. Now just about here we come across our first really big issue with this particular piece and that is if I wanted to make this incredibly realistic then I would have to put in all of the little details that are reflecting on the ball here. But I'm not going to do that today because we're trying to make this as simple as possible. So what I'm going to do is basically just use my indigo pencils to just imply some shapes in there and that's going to give us the effect we want without putting in over the top detail. 
My first move is going to be to create a very defined dark line because it really is that extreme difference between lights and darks that makes something look shiny. In this bauble we've really softened out all of the edges and that gives it all a matte appearance and on this side we're really really sharpening everything up with a lot of very defined edges and some really high contrast. Now with that sharp line in place I'm just going to put in some darker shapes sort of following the kind of shapes that I've got in that bauble there. What you can see there is actually my hands holding my iPhone um, over the top of the desk um, and then you can see the reflection of the room, a fan up the top, all kinds of little details but we're not going to put all of those in today. We're going to get a nice shiny effect without putting in every single detail. All of this stuff reflecting down the side here is just the other blue bauble reflecting on the surface of this shinier bauble. Okay, and I'm going to take this line up and I'm going to follow the darkest areas on this bauble. While I'm doing this, I'm going to really take my time to examine the reference photo looking for darker areas. Where the bottom of the bauble touches the table, underneath the cap, and where the first bauble is being reflected in the shiny surface. Now just like I did on that first bauble, I'm going to use my phthalo blue to colour over everything that I've got here, avoiding those very brightest highlights. Now you can see here that the areas where the white was laid down first haven't picked up that blue as dark as the areas right next to it. Um, and that really does help with the shading. Just before I go too far, I'm going to colour up here as well. And then I'm just going to take that middle phthalo blue pencil, I'm just going to lightly dust it over the brightest highlights there. And now we're ready to blend all those colours together once again. Okay, before I blend out these very brightest highlights, I'm just going to take a moment to clean off my brush so I don't accidentally push in any of the darker colours over the top. I'm just going to quickly blend that out, being careful not to blow the edges too much. Okay, so we've come to this point where we've got a couple of layers of pencil down and we've blended it out with our odorless mineral spirits. Uh, things are still looking a little bit patchy and a little bit mm, not so great, but that's okay. We've got more layers to come. So I'm going to let this one dry and I'm going to start working on our more satin ball again. Okay, so things are going to be a little bit easier this second time around because we can see a bit better where our pencil's going to be going. I am going to add down another layer of our white pencil. This time I'm going to really build up inside that central portion of this highlight. And once again, just ever so gently blend out those colours around the edges there. The main concentration of that light is going to be in that centre. Good couple of layers down over, going over a couple of times. And then I'm going to add just a light dusting around the outside, not too much. Really sort of soft spot there where that reflection is coming off this ball. And then on this other side here, I'm not going to colour in all of this area. I'm really just going to add the whitest part to this central area here. Now that we have those lightest areas in place, I'm just going to re-establish those darkest areas. Going in with my indigo pencil and blurring that boundary between the lightest and the darkest areas. Okay, so I'm going to go in with that darker phthalo blue and I'm going to go all over these dark areas. I'm going to avoid those brighter highlights um, and I'm also going to avoid this bright spot here. I might go over that with that lighter blue, but I think I want to keep that area nice and bright. And just quickly, I'm going to take that middle phthalo blue and go around and just ever so slightly blend out the edges of our highlights, keeping those edges nice and soft. 
and we're ready to blend for the last time. Okay, once again, I'm just going to take a moment to knock off any excess blue pigment and I'm ready to blend this out. Now, because this is the second coat, I'm going to only have a very, very small amount of thinners on my brush. I'm going to avoid those lighter areas until I know I have a clean brush. So we're going to continue on with the second layer on our second bauble, just following the same pattern as last time. We're going to get our lights in, we're going to get our darks in, and then fill in everything in between. So we start with our white pencil, and we're going to once again put in a decent layer of pencil well within these borders. Now we're going to go in with our indigo pencil and really redefine those darker areas. And now we're going to go back in with our phthalo blue. So I'm just going to do one last pass with this middle, middle phthalo blue, very lightly over those main highlights. And now I'm going to blend all of these together, being very careful not to accidentally blur these edges. I'm going to try and keep everything nice and sharp. I just want to push that pencil into the paper to make all of those colours nice and rich and bold. I am pretty happy with how these two baubles are looking, but it does need just a few more touches. I am going to go in with a very sharp black pencil and I'm going to start adding in a few details. The first thing I'm going to do is work on these caps. Now I'm going to look for these very dark areas in here and I'm just going to add these details in. So there's a little bit just at the top of the cap here. Just where things are in very, very dark shadow. And with that in place, I'm going to add just a very small shadow where the baubles are touching the tables. I'm not going to take that up too far, just a touch. It's just where the light isn't touching. And then I have a do I do have an area of a fairly deep shadow where these two baubles are overlapping each other. I'm just going to add a touch of that in there. And I'll just take two seconds to blend out the harshness of that black. Just a few little touches with the paintbrush. Now I'm going to work on the caps of these baubles. And this is an area where um, I could probably go into a lot more detail, but I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible with just our three colours. There are a lot of reflected colours in there, but, but because this is a beginner's tutorial, I'm really just going to be looking for light, dark and in between. I must apologise at this point. This was the eighth time that I'd drawn this little piece and I did get a little lazy and slipped into my usual drawing habits, forgetting to go step by step. But essentially what I am doing is looking at the tones in my reference pictures. With my white I am putting down those lightest areas first, then I put down my darkest areas with the black, and then finally I fill in everything in between with that cool grey 3. Now I will have some reference pictures with these areas all mapped out on my website, but the main thing to remember here is to keep the borders between these values pretty sharp, because that's how we're going to make these caps look nice and shiny. Finally, I use a little bit of thinners on my brush to push those colours down into the paper, being careful not to blend those areas together too much because I'll lose all that lovely contrast. I'm just pushing that pencil down into the paper to get a nice finished look. Very last step, I am going to use my dark indigo pencil to put in a deep shadow just underneath each of these baubles. I'm not going to use black because I think that some of the blue would be reflected down onto the table and I think that sounds fun. I'm going to concentrate that indigo right where the bauble touches the table and where we put that little touch of black. Right up underneath and I'm going to leave that with a really soft edge. You can see once again I'm holding that 
very far away from the tip of my pencil just so I can't put too much pressure on. And then I'm going to use my Cool Grey 3 to just blur out the edge of that with a really light layer of grey pencil. And then I'm just really quickly going to use my thinners and blend that together very lightly and smoking out the edges as much as I can. And I think we're done. Okay, so our little baubles are all finished. Now, after completing this drawing, I hope you can see what a difference you can make to a drawing just by changing how our colors blend together. On this side where we have really blended those colors together, we have a nice soft satin look to the surface of our ball. And on this side where we have kept our edges sharp and we have kept a really strong contrast between light and dark areas, our bauble looks so much more shiny. Now both of these have been drawn with the same colors and the same method, but we have created two entirely different textures just by changing how much our colors are blended together. Now of course you could try this using any color. Feel free to change the colors of these baubles to suit whatever you might like. Just grab yourself a light and a dark and a mid-tone version of whichever color you like and go for it. The main reason I chose to do blue today was because if you have followed along with my first three tutorials uh, and like me you've had to go out and buy just a few pencils at a time to start your collection you should now have a pretty decent range of colors to choose from to go forward and try to create something of your own and that's where the fun really starts I would just like to take a moment to thank my patrons. You guys really helped to allow me to take the time to be able to create tutorial videos like this. For you a real-time version of this tutorial is available now as a thank you for your support. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please leave me a like or a comment to tell me what you think. And if you go forward and create this piece yourself, I would love to see it. Please feel free to tag me on Instagram or Facebook. Seeing your gorgeous work really makes my day. I'll be back next week with a new drawing, so I hope you'll hit that subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching.